Okay, hello hackers and welcome to another video where today we're going to be learning how to build a small text adventure game. Now, in Python, this text adventure game is basically going to take the form of kind of like a Dungeons and Dragons-esque game where there's no imagery presented to our player. So they have to use their imagination to come up with the scene or any actions that they're going to be performing. And to help with that, our game manager, our dungeon manager, or in this case, our computer program, needs to be able to explain and describe that environment so that they get a nice vivid picture of where they are and what they are doing. So to start with, I've kind of planned out the little format for the game itself so that you can see. We're going to be exploring a castle, uh, and we're obviously going to be starting at some sort of main menu. Uh, and then from there, we're going to give the player some options that allows them to do some stuff. And in some instances, the player's story is going to end. So let's jump straight into the code and have a look at what this looks like. So when I come into my Python game here, I'm going to be using functions to control my entire game. So to begin with, I am going to define a function called welcome. Okay, and the reason that we're defining this function called welcome is because on my little plan here, you can see that I have a function called welcome here for my main menu. Now from there, I'm going to print out some text um, for my player. Now I'm going to create this as a triple quote, which means that it is a multi-line string, which means that I can write paragraphs of information for my player here. So I am going to start with telling them who they are. So you are a medieval, medieval knight who is exploring the local area and approaches a castle. In the castle, which Okay, so you can see that I'm starting to set my story here. So you're a medieval knight who's exploring the local area and you approach a castle. Now in the castle, you can see that there's some commotion which you think might be worth investigating. You see some um, personnel from, uh, there should be two ends. Okay, so you can see here, I am starting to tell my player exactly what's happening. So there are a medieval knight who's exploring the local area. They approach a castle in the castle. There's a commotion that might be worth investigating and you see some personnel or some defenders or something like that from the castle who want to, who don't view your presence too kindly. They look like they're going to fire upon you. So they obviously have like arrows or crossbows or um, whatever. Um, do you dive into the moat to escape or do you run into the castle for safety? So you will notice that over here in my planning, I had some stuff written down where I said my next command was going to be dive and my next command was going to be bridged across the drawbridge. Now, because of what I've written, I'm just going to change that to run so that it makes more sense. Now, this means that obviously when we're asking the question, we're saying to the person, do you want to dive? So I'm going to put this in square brackets to indicate to my player that this is something that they can type in or run into the castle for safety. So then I'm gonna create a thing where I get some input from the player. So I'm gonna say option equals um, input, and then I want them to type in, um, sorry, uh, and then I don't want them to type in anything, okay? Because the text or the question that we've asked has already been asked up here. It's just gonna appear on a new line for us. This is where we start to create branches for our code. So if option equals equals, dive, okay, we want them to go to a function. And then elif option equals run. 
we're going to get them to go to a different function. And then else, we want to go to an invalid option function here. Okay. And then we want it to go back to welcome. Okay, so this will make sense in a little bit more time. But as we jump into here, you'll notice that now when I come into my dive function, it's going to go to a function called moat. I'm sorry, when I type my dive command, it's going to go to a function called moat. And when I type my run command, it's going to go to a function called drawbridge. So that's what these two function names are going to be. So dive was moat, okay, and run was drawbridge. Now you can see that we have three errors popping up, one for moat, one for drawbridge, and one for invalid option. And this is simply because these functions here don't exist yet. So that I can quickly test to see if this one's working, I'm just gonna come right down a little bit further here and I'm gonna type in welcome. Now this is how we call our function. So obviously by calling our first function welcome, this is now going to allow us to play. Now this particular line of text this one where we call our welcome function needs to be at the very bottom of our code. And the reason for that is that when Python creates or compiles an application, it reads from the top down, okay? And that means that any code that appears before or gets called, like a function like this, that appears before it's actually been compiled, it won't run. So we need to put that down at the bottom. So what I'm going to quickly do is come up here and run my application and you should see that my text appears. So you are a medieval knight, blah, 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 blah. Do you want to do this? And if I type in dive, it'll come up with an error saying it doesn't know what moat is. Now that's a good thing because that means our game is working at this stage and we need to create the moat function. Now, before I do that though, I'm going to quickly create a invalid option text. Okay, so this function we're going to be able to reuse on every function that we create to keep getting the person a little message that says you typed in something that's incorrect. So I'm just going to print them a quick message. You entered an invalid option. Please try again. Okay, and that's all I'm going to do for this invalid option because then we're going to jump back to the welcome function. So you can see that it's going to circle back to itself and then it's gonna print this text out again. Now, I didn't like the way that that was formatted last time because it started to indent that text a little bit. So I'm just gonna bring it back to the outside here in my uh, multi-line string. So the next step is obviously you can see that because we created invalid option, it's now not an error. We need to go ahead and start to create some of these other functions. So you can see that when we use the dive command and we go to the moat function, my next thing that I said was I was gonna to say to the player that the player died. Okay, which is obviously not a great thing, but it means that we can keep our story moving. So I'm gonna define my moat function and I'm gonna start with another print statement. Okay, and this one's also going to be a multi-line string. You dive into the moat. You attempt to swim away. Your heavy metal armor is too heavy to overcome and you slowly slip deeper and deeper into the water. This is where your story ends. Okay, so obviously I'm not gonna make it too graphic here. Um, obviously players could use their imagination about struggling to keep their head above water or something like that, but that comes up to the player's choice now. So I've told them that they're basically, they've died and that their story is over. But now I can ask them that same sort of question again. So I can say print. Um, well actually I can do this a little bit quicker this time. So I can have input. Um, Option equals input. Would you like to play a game? And then again, to keep the player, or oh, the instructions for the player consistent, I'm putting these in the square brackets like we did up here so they can answer yes or no. And then I can have if option equals yes. We're gonna go back to the welcome function. And then else, I'm just gonna print out a quick message that says, thanks for playing. 
Okay, so you can see how these are starting to link together. So if I run my game this time, you know, we're our medieval knight, what do you want to do? If I type in dive, obviously that was an error last time. I type in dive and it says you dive into the moat, you attempt to swim away, your heavy metal armor is too heavy to overcome, you slowly slip deeper and deeper into the water. This is where your story ends, do you want to play again? Now if I type in yes, it'll take me back to the welcome function, which means I can start again. But if I type in no, it prints out, thanks for playing, and then quits my code. So that's where the game ends at this stage. So you can start to see how these things are going to be pieced together and it's going to help us to begin to create a little bit of a story that the player can play through. Now, obviously our next function that we've created that we, or sorry, that we've mentioned that we haven't created is our one called drawbridge. So I'm going to create that now. So define drawbridge. Okay. And my drawbridge function is going to be made up of another multi-line string. Okay. And in that string, I'm going to tell the player that they run across the drawbridge to escape the arrows. So you see the um, defenders starting to draw their bows. You run across the drawbridge to safety. As you enter under the arch entry, you hear the arrows thud against the wooden drawbridge. You look around to see where to go next. You can see To your left, the stable, and just above you, you can, you can see some stairs leading up to the ramparts where the defenders were shooting you from. Okay, so uh, that's going to be our command here. So they're obviously now asking the player to type in stables or stable or stairs, okay, just like we had back here. So if they type in run, they're going to come to the drawbridge function and then the drawbridge function is going to give them a command for stairs and a command for stable, which is going to send them to two different parts. Now you can see that this stable option, obviously I haven't explored what that looks like in my mind map. Uh, but from here, obviously, we're going to be able to then start to send out some more info. So we want to now start to have a look at what our code looks like. So from here, we're going to have the same thing as always. So option equals input. Okay, and then if option equals stable, we're going to go to the stable function else if option equals stairs we're going to go to the ramparts function and then just like we did before we're going to have an else down here that says we're going to an invalid option And then this time, instead of going back to welcome, we're going to go back to drawbridge because remember, we don't want them to be sent all the way back to the start if they make a mistake. We just want them to have to repeat the part that they were up to. So now our story is starting to take shape. So if we were to come into our game, we can type in run. Okay. And now we can see that there's some defenders. We're able to type in stable or we're able to type in stairs. So if I type in either of these, obviously we're going to get an error because at this stage we haven't created these functions. So that's obviously going to be the next part. But you can see how my mind map here is allowing me to start to build out what my story looks like. Now, I could obviously go a little bit further to talk about that when we get to the top of the stairs, um, you have two options for uh, weapons that you could pick up. You could choose to pick up a crossbow or you could choose to pick up a sword. Now, obviously, with the other guys having bows and arrows, you picking up just a sword is probably not going to be too useful. So hence our player dying. But maybe with the crossbow, you're able to duck into some cover. 
would start to fire off some rounds against the archers that were on the ramparts that were shooting at you so that you can um, you know have a little bit of a fight um, what we have what happens in the stable who knows at this stage obviously that could go a little bit further now in terms of what you need to do to continue building your story i'm just going to quickly scroll back up to the top now and we're going to add some comments into our moat oh no we might do it to our drawbridge function okay so actually let's do it to the start one because it actually works okay so when we define welcome we're going to have a define um, and then our function name okay uh, from there we're going to create a print um, statement which includes a multi-line string triple quotes okay um, and then we enter all of the information about our current setting and options for the player okay that's what we're putting in there okay this next part down here so the if statement allows us to check which option the player enters okay and then from here after each part of the if statement we enter the function name that we want to go to okay so that's kind of explaining how this whole thing is put together so the first thing we're going to do is put our function name okay and then from there we're going to create a print statement and our input or at least wait for input okay from our player now what I'm going to do very quickly just for this example is I'm just going to start to add these extra characters here so it shows the player where they need to type so when I come down a little bit further would you like to play again yes or no um, I'm just going to add those in again and then on my drawbridge one um, for my input I'm going to just quickly put this in okay so that that way it shows them where they need to type it's going to make things a little bit easier for my player okay and the last thing I want to do is just quickly tidy this back up so that it looks nice and neat and it's fairly consistent across the way so when I run the game now obviously you can see we're a medieval knight and we've got this nice little character cursor ready to go so what do I want to do? Obviously we know if I type in dive, I die, and then it asks if I want to play again. So I can type in yes. This time I'm going to type in run. Okay, and then as we know, we start to see our defenders. Um, they draw their bows, they start to shoot at us. Okay, and then we enter the arch entry. We hear the arrows like thud, 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 all against the wooden drawbridge. And then we look around to see where to go next. Um, over to our left, we can see a stable, which we know we don't have any code for. And then just above us, we can see some stairs that lead up to the ramparts where the defenders were shooting us from. So where do we want to go? Me, personally, I will always probably want to go to the stairs and fight the guys that were fighting me. So when I type in that one, obviously my code exits here. And then that's because there's an error. So I might just quickly add that one more function for you so that we can see how that extra story goes. But I'm gonna to refer to the instructions up here at the top each time. So the first thing I need to do is define my function name. So I'm gonna come into here and say define ramparts. Okay, so that spelling needs to be the same as what we've got here. Okay, and then from there, the next thing I'm going to do is create a print statement which includes a multi-line string. So that's made up of triple quotes. Okay, and then we enter all of the information about our current setting and options for the player. So down here in my ramparts, I'm gonna say print. Okay, and in my print, I'm gonna put my triple quotes. Okay, so now it's like I get to describe my form. So um, you race up the stairs and want to confront the guys shooting at you okay um, as you reach the top of the stairs you see a sword lying against 
the wall. In the middle of the path, there is a crossbow, which weapon do you want to use? Okay, so again, for consistency, I'm going to drop my commands in some square brackets so that they can see that. Okay, so I've written my print statement. Obviously, I now need that same option as always. So I might actually just copy and paste this one down to make it nice and quick. So I'm going to put my option in there. Okay, and then if option equals sword, okay, it's going to go to, what did I call this function here? Uh, it's going to go to a function called sword. Okay, and then elif option equals crossbow. It's going to go to a crossbow function. And then else, we're going to give them that same one again, invalid option, and then send them back to ramparts. So you can see where this starts to become quite useful, where we can have a function that does something, and then we can keep calling that function over and over and over and over again at different parts. <laughs> And then by only having a very, very simple statement in this one means that I get to save typing that every single time that they type something invalid. Um, now, obviously, I, I didn't include like the go back to the start code in my invalid option because on each of these, I need to send them to a different place so that that can repeat over and over and over again. So you can now see that my story is starting to take shape. It's very clear that I haven't created my stable function yet because it's got a red underline under it. I haven't created my sword function and I haven't created my crossbow. But what I might do so that I know that I have these ready to go, so that's not the right button, is I'm going to come into here and say done. And then on this one, I did make my moat one. So I'm going to have a done there. And I've done my drawbridge one and my stairs, but I haven't made crossbow and sword yet. Okay, so this is now starting to show me that these are the ones that I've done and then I can obviously refer back to this at some stage and go, okay, cool, my stable function not completed yet. So that's a good thing to be able to come back to. Now, obviously it's over for you at this point. Now, if you wanna to start to create this particular story, by all means, go ahead. I've just started making it up with some random text about a random setting for a random knight exploring a random castle who's getting shot upon, okay? Um, if you want to create your own story right from the beginning, obviously you can follow this kind of procedure and you're going to be replacing this story text to change it. What I would recommend though is potentially grabbing some paper out and having a look at how you might go about laying out your story. So you could do this on paper where you start to lay out all of your options like a little mind map, or you could use a little application like Miro, like I've got here, and do it online where you're starting to build these things out. One bonus of using Miro is that if I do need to start to build lots and lots of options, so say for instance, a heap more stuff that comes off here or goes up that way or whatever it happens to be, I can obviously slowly start dragging these functions around so that I can start to see that I've got more space ready to go down there. So that's one advantage of this. So definitely recommend using an application like Miro um, online to start to build this one out, or you can use some paper, either or is perfectly fine. Okay, and then you can start to build out your story, um, slowly making sure that for each of your functions that you create, um, you're making a new function for it with a defined statement there as well. Again, one thing that I cannot stress enough, it's something that I covered right at the start, the very last line of text that you want as part of your program is the call for your very first function. So remember up here at the top, we had our function called welcome. Okay, um, if your program's not running or if your program gets halfway through and you find that you had some code written but that code's never appearing and it says that it's missing, make sure that your welcome function is down at the very bottom and it doesn't appear halfway through your program because remembering Python will compile the code from top to bottom. Okay, and by placing this function at the bottom, it means that all of our functions will be compiled and ready to go, ready to work. And then when our welcome function is called, 
that will allow them to jump in and out as much as we want. So hopefully that helps. If you need any assistance or you've got a few questions, hit me up in the comments and then we can go from there. But thank you so much. I'll see you in the next video.